Pope and Young Club wants to welcome you as we rally together to ensure our bow hunting opportunities for today and tomorrow. You've come to the podcast that believes in preserving, protecting, and promoting the passion for bow hunting. Join us as we strive to be the voice of today's bow hunter. This is the Pope and Young Podcast. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Pope and Young Podcast. Jason Roundsville here, joined as always, although off off camera today, we've got Dylan Ray with us. He's uh, handling AV duties for our first ever, this is episode number one of our Tacticam sponsored podcast. So thanks to Tacticam for, for hooking us up. Glad to have them on board. And we've got with us one of our new corporate partners. Um, uh, you know, I don't know how long he's been involved. We're going to find out how long he's been involved with Pope and Young, but the last year he jumped the cannonball into the deep end. That's so right. So we've got Josh Bybee. He is with Wild Fit. And uh, Josh, welcome, man. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be here. So this is, uh, you know, I, I know we met for the first time in Ogden last May, not even a year ago. That's right. And uh, you guys were part of the Bow Hunters Bash up there, a big part of it. Came in, supported us, had a booth, and then, uh, you know, jumped in with the auction. I think you ended up with two or three hunts. Got a couple hunts. That, yeah. Uh, it <laughs> well, was a good time. a couple. <laughs> We're not sure if, if your wife's listening. So if she is, it's just a couple of hunts. Right. And then... Uh, um, and then at one of the mountain archery festivals we got to visit, and and so we're actually going antelope hunting here before too long that's with right. Pope and Young Week at Bear Track. That's right. So that's going to be a fantastic week. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, so I, I'd like to, you know, welcome to the corporate partner program. Tell us about Wild Fit. And so for for folks that don't know. Um, you were with Timber Whisper, and you were going to incorporate Wild Fit in. That's correct. And you're like, sounds like you're so excited about Wild Fit. You're like, this is getting all my energy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> just uh, just a little background. Um, I started, you know, with Timber Whisper. Uh, that was a hunting apparel uh, uh, line that I had, and Wild Fit has been something that I've been <clears throat> working on for a few years, actually. I. My, my background is in the nutraceutical industry. I've, I've made a career uh, as a formulator um, for dietary supplements. Okay. I've, I've, I've formulated supplements for um, a lot of the brands that uh, uh, people would recognize, you know, in the market. Um, and with that, I've always had a dream uh, of starting my own supplement line. And, you know, Wild Fit is that dream coming to fruition Nice. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, originally I, I had that uh, apparel um, brand, Timber Whisper, and I was in a, um, you know, run Wild Fit, the supplement line, under that umbrella. And I've decided to put all my energy and focus into my true passion, and that's, uh, you know, this, this dietary supplement uh, supplement line, Wild Fit. And, Very nice. Um, yeah, so that's that's how it all began. I, You know, with Timber Whisper, it was, it was great to just kind of, jump jump in head first i my uh my mom works for weaver county uh the you know the county up there in ogden where the bow hunters bash yeah, was she did all the all the prep stuff right. for us for the bow hunters bash small world story right and yeah. she she called me a couple a couple weeks before that event and said josh you you got to have a booth at you know at this bow hunters bash and i said when is it she's like uh, it's it's a week from saturday <laughs> I was like, what you do I need? She's like, I, next Saturday. <laughs> she's like, you, you need, you need a booth. So I, I scrambled to find a, you know, 10, 10 by 10 canopy uh, tent and uh, get, you know, some apparel ready for that show and just kind of jumped in, had really no idea what I was doing. And then uh, was able to do a few math events and even uh, some tack events uh, last summer. Nice. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was a great experience. It really was. I, I learned a lot, and you know, I want I want to take some of the th things I learned from, you know, really putting myself out there, getting out of my comfort zone, uh, learning a little bit about you know the industry, uh, how, how how things work, and uh, apply that to you know this supplement line, Wild Fit. Excellent. Yeah, you see, um, it, I I think it's becoming more 
more and more widespread. I, I've got a buddy that's been in the the bodybuilding industry, and I think there it's been around for a long time. Right. But you haven't seen it creep into the hunting side until you know just more recent years. Right. I I mean I like I said I've been in the nutraceutical dietary supplement industry for for the last decade, and you know as a formulator I've I've seen the growth firsthand. Uh, I've had you know that insider's look uh, of how that has just expanded and you know i in my early 20s i i i I was into bodybuilding and that's really what got me into um the line of work and and the career that i have now is just my passion um for for bodybuilding um for nutrition uh and you know I, i i remember you know taking uh supplements when you know, they didn't have flavor, and, you know, it... it yeah, you heard it about that. It's like... <laughs> you had to choke it down, right? Cardboard in a cup. Right. Yes. Right. So, you know, seeing that growth um, has been has been awesome, and, and it's starting to really cross over into other segments and other industries, uh, like, you know, the hunting industry. And, you know, in the last 10 years, that, that growth in this industry has accelerated. And uh, it's been it's been really really neat to see. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I was I've been in the bodybuilding for years. One, I, one pizza at a time. Right, right. I've been, <laughs> but different parts maybe, but yeah, <laughs> one pizza at a time. Yeah. Uh, although I'm trying, I'm, I'm really <laughs> that's, trying. That's work. That that's years of work right there. It is. You know, it's like, years that, of work. You can't get that overnight. No, so you, you know, just, I like that's pizza a lot of dedication. Burgers. Yeah. But you know, I offset it because because now I drink diet do instead right. of the regular. So well, you know, I, sacrifice. I, you know, I'm no longer in my prime either, and you know, I I switched over to the diet do diet do myself. So. Absolutely, you have you to just still have. you get that get to that point where it's it's diet or nothing, right? Yes, yes. And so <laughs> diet do, if you're listening, we do have room for one more sponsor for this podcast. Yeah, I was going to ask, are they a sponsor? Uh, they're not yet. We're, we're okay. you know, we keep throwing it out there. We get, one of these days they're going to call us and say, "Hey, I'm a diet do. We're here <laughs> to sponsor your podcast." Well, you know, this podcast is a good start, you know. Hopefully That's right. That, that gets us there. So Yeah, and it's um yeah, I think if we could get uh if, if we get diet do, that would be nice and maybe uncrustables cuz that seems to be the other one that right. I don't know why. You know, today we're talking about pizza, but we tend to talk about snacks often on this show. Well, you know, Uncrustables and Diet do. I, I usually have those in my pack when, there, I'm, when I'm out in the field, you know. You, you have I, to have them. And I usually have a Diet do uh, as a cel- uh, celebratory, you know, drink after, you know, I harvest an animal. Uh, yeah. It's kind of, that's what I do is I pop a do and, and uh, you know, it, it's great. And then... You can't go wrong with the the uncrustables. No. Yeah. I uh, you know the only the only thing that we've the only knock on the uncrustables that we've heard is that the packaging is is noisy. And so we were actually at uh I wish Dylan was on here. I think we were at ATA and we saw some folks from was it Half Sack and they actually make a snack bag. Okay. Specifically because it's quiet for all those noisy wrapper snacks. Oh. Now you just put them in the snack pack, and uh, and you're good to go. You're not going to scare anything away. Oh, okay, yeah, so. that's, good, that's good to that's good to hear. I mean, I I'm usually you know not the quietest uh, guy stomping around the woods. Yeah. You know? So I, I need all the help I can get. You know, it, just being a little big boned. You know, I I break a few more branches than the average guy. Yeah. So you know any. Any advantage I can get, <laughs> I'll take it. You know, I, I think you hear all the time about, you know, like scent and all of these, you know, get the wind right and all these things. And I'll tell you what, I think sometimes people forget about the sound. And I have an example of that. Last year I was at uh, Elk Hunt at a place in Eastern Oregon with uh, my good buddy Dave Sita. And... I was talking to, to one of his hunters and the guy's like, Oh man, I had this, had this bull coming in and real nice six point bull. He got to about 60 yards and, and, uh, he, he smelled me and took off. And I'm like, you know, they don't usually smell you out of a ground blind at 60 yards. That's, yeah, that's not common. I was like, 
are you sure he smelled you? He goes, well, he must have because he just took off. And I'm like, well, what were you doing when this bull <laughs> took off? He says, well, I was moving the chair out of the way so I'd have a shot. And I was like, <laughs> so you're making noise in the blind while this bull was coming in. And the guy, you could just see, he didn't want to believe it, but all of a sudden he realized that he had just botched his chance at a right. trophy elk. Right. And it's like, no, that couldn't have been it. I'm like, I'm 99% sure that was it. And I don't know, two or three days later, I was in a blind. It's a different blind, but I was sitting there and I was, you could see up on the sagebrush hillside. And so I was walking, watching this spike bull. He was kind of over the crest of the hill. I think he was at 200 and, I don't know, 215 yards or so. And I just moved to grab something out of my pack. It wasn't noisy. It wasn't anything that I would have expected him to hear at 200 yards. And so I might have done a zipper. I forget exactly what it was. but So I just cracked his zipper just a little bit, and all of a sudden he just and literally you just pegged me. And I'm like, that's that's... I wasn't expecting it, and it just it made me rethink how I do things in a ground blind because a lot of times you get in there and you're trying to be still, but you're still moving around a little bit or, you know, shuffling your feet. And if he could hear that zipper, he yeah. could hear your feet moving. Even with because we put carpet down in the blinds, even there they'll they'll hear you at 200 yards. And how many times? This one was one of those places where I could see him. I knew he was there. How many times is there an elk? just around the corner that maybe you can't if he'd have been two feet farther down on the hill i couldn't have even seen him wouldn't have known he was there he still might have heard me. so how many elk or animals or whitetails or whatever you're chasing hear you that you net they were never quite close enough for you to get a visual on and they heard you rustling around in the blind or in the tree stand right i i mean that's why i love to run and gun when when i'm chasing elk with my bow yeah, I love to, you know, call. I'm, I, I I call a lot when I'm when I'm hunting elk. I, you know, guys have different <clears throat> ideas around that and strategies. Uh, for me, I I'm a caller, and you know, I part of that is, you know, the sound I'm making as I'm going through the brush, as I'm going through the timber, is to mimic, you know, mimic elk. I'm trying yeah. to impersonate an elk as much as possible. You know, uh, the downside of that, you know, sometimes I call in other hunters yeah but, uh, i must be a pretty good caller if i'm calling in other hunters. <laughs> but uh you know that's that's why i love to run and gun for for elk but you know i had a similar experience this <clears throat> last november uh on a archer mule deer hunt just just here in utah and it was just you know it was on the extended and we had <clears throat> a lot of early snow in november um that was yeah pretty unusual just the amount we were getting and it just made, you know, the season prime. I mean, the deer had moved down low. Right. Uh, there was a lot of them. And uh, I, you know, the 1st of November, I, I located a, a really good buck buck for, you know, for this hunt. Uh, he was he was a nice four-point, um, uh, just just a solid buck, uh, probably, you know, 170-class uh, buck. And I, I spent the month. You know, you know, most people call that a 200. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, we're on the podcast, so it was probably two twenty ish. <laughs> yeah, two twenty and change, gross. Yeah, yeah. you know, and eating yeah, that out right. when yeah, you know, two twelve or yeah, two twelve, two twelve or one seventy one. You know, same thing. <laughs> yeah, same thing. Yeah, you know, it depended on the day. But uh, I chased this buck all month long, and uh, I finally had my opportunity. Um, I I found him in his bed, and uh, put a put a stock on him, and I got within you know uh, seventy yards, and he was. He didn't know I was I was there. I was right above him, and he was moving towards me. And you know, at seventy yards, I had I had a decent shot. You know, there at seventy yards, but I felt like I'd I'd get a better shot. Right. And he was moving towards me, and the wind was in my favor. I, you know, he he couldn't see me uh, where where I was at, um, and he he disappeared behind some brush, and I. I thought I was being very, very careful, but I took just a few steps just to get a better angle. Just, you know, with the direction he was going, I knew he would just come into this little opening, and it would be about 65 yards, and I just had to take a few steps 
you know, and, and he'd be right there and, you know, and, and I'd have my, have my animal. And, uh, and all of a sudden I took those two steps and it was like time froze and he just popped up, jetted across, you know, the other side of the draw and stopped broadside. He was, you know, 82 yards and I, I shot an arrow and, and unfortunately I missed him, but I was like, how, how did that happen? There's no way you could see me. There's no way you could smell me. The wind was in my face. Well, the only explanation is that crunchy snow and just the, the you know, two steps I took, you know, that yeah. little shuffle. Just get, was, you're like, I just need the angle. Just, just need the need angle. The angle. Yeah. That's... And I was kicking myself, you know, you, then you, then you, you know, play it back over and over and over again in your mind. And I'm like, well, I, over. I had, over. <laughs> I had a, you know, he was slightly quartering towards me at 70 yards and I practiced that shot quite, quite a bit. Why didn't I just, you know, do it then? But I, anyway, you, there's always, you know, what I, what I should have done, what I could have done. But, uh, I thing is you got another 40 years to relive that. Right. Cause you will. <laughs> we what, do. Right. Right. <laughs> it's, uh, that's it's, what makes, that's what makes it great though. Is yeah. just reliving those uh, experiences, you know, whether you're successful or you have a close call and you, you, you know, you know, you miss, that's what keeps you going back, you know, back every year, year after year, you know, embracing the suck, you know, sometimes I do a lot of solo hunting. And when I'm out in the woods, you know, hiking in a rainstorm, I, you know, I got poured on in Wyoming this year and I was just, you know, five miles back in the back country by myself in Wyoming, just getting just soaked. I was just, it's like, man, this sucks. And at the time it did, I didn't see yeah. any elk, you know, I hunted hard for a few days and didn't see any elk. And I was just, I just got my butt kicked. And, uh, you know, now I look back at that and I, you know, it's like I was, on a beach somewhere in Mexico. Yeah. You know, the memories like, Oh, that was awesome. You know? <laughs> yeah. The, but I was just miserable suffering. You I, know? I've, I've heard, and I don't know, I'm not trying to start a war or anything, but I, I heard there were some studies done that men like have a tendency to forget the bad parts of things. Yeah. And like women intentionally remember <laughs> those things. So it's, it's kind of like, yeah. I think like, my wife would agree with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, because you just forget things. You're like, do you remember this? I'm like, no. And they're like, y y you were down for three days. Oh, gosh, I don't have a record. Yeah, it was awesome. I was yeah. <laughs> three days. It was a day. You yeah. Know? And so it's, um, there's some of that. Because I think if you, if you really thought about it, like, especially on, you know, elk hunting, if, if, I think if you lo logically think about how long it's going to take you to pack that animal out, you, all of a sudden you might not go that far from the road. Right. Cause right. it's like, uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, this, this elk hunt in Wyoming this last fall, I, you know, I hunted September, a lot of weekends, you know, solo and, uh, and you know, with that tag, I, I had my archery stamp and then, you know, October I, I could hunt with a rifle and uh, I didn't fill it in September with my bow and went back to this spot where I had, you know, found, found elk. Right. And one morning with my buddy there, we, we ended up, I ended up filling my tag uh, and it was pretty close to the road and, you know, it made the pack out, you know, pretty enjoyable yeah. <laughs> for the most part. Like I was like, yeah, this, I could get used to this, you know, <laughs> close to Close to a four wheeler trail, I I don't have there to you, go. you know pack it out seven miles you know three miles solo. It definitely was easier on my back and knees. Yeah, uh, yeah, it didn't absolutely kill myself to get that elk off the mountains. Yeah, years ago I was just a little kid and we were up uh, where we were up somewhere in the Cascades of Oregon, and I was we we're we we're kind of going we'd been up glassing. Um, clear cuts and, and we we're headed to another spot and as we're driving down this road to go out to the next glassing location I'm looking you know way out the passenger side of the rig like down into this just deep dark nastiness and my dad's like what are you doing I was like you never know we might see something down there and he says careful you might see something down there right he says if you see something down there you're gonna chase it and he says you don't want to go down there I've there's no road down there there's no nothing he says I've been to the bottom of that you don't want to go there you're right so yeah we uh you know growing up deer hunting with my dad it was always you know when we would do our little do our hikes or whatever you know we'd hike down a draw 
you know, it was it was always, you know, you you don't shoot anything small down here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the small ones are for off the road, you know. Yeah. No, I was in Idaho on a hunt with a buddy of mine, and he was like, he just wanted an elk. You know, he's like, hey, I, I'll, I'll take any legal elk. And I'm like, okay. And we went in one of those places. And I'm like, you're not shooting any legal elk. I'm like, it's going to take us two days to get this thing out. So right. it better be worth two days. Right, right. Um, it, yeah. So, but, you know, people do it, and they love it, and it's it just gets in your blood. And, and, and yeah. fortunately, we forget to pack out. Yeah, I, you know, I've, I've packed out three bull elk um, solo. And, uh, and, you know, I, every time I, I do it, um, I tell myself you're an idiot and I'm not going to do this again. I'm an elk count with, uh, with buddies, but, uh, every year I find myself hiking and getting way back in the, yeah. <laughs> into the timber, you know, by myself with, you know, uh, chasing bugles and, you know, I, I forget about everything. And yeah. I have one thing on my mind and that's, uh, you know, fill my tag and, and, and getting that animal and and uh, you, you you know I forget about the the suffering <laughs> from the previous year when when I had to pack out you know yeah an elk by myself but that's um, yeah man when you're by yourself those I mean elk are big creatures yeah, when you're by yourself they're even bigger yes. if there's two of you you're like hey at least hold the leg while right, I'm doing right. this if there's no if there's not a second person you're holding the leg and running the <laughs> knife and everything I'm like that's uh, it, you don't realize how big animals are until you have to muscle them around by yourself. Oh yeah, yeah. When you get that dead weight, and yeah, you're trying to to move that dead weight around. It it's yeah, <laughs> it humbles you real quick. Yeah. So is elk hunting your favorite? Because if you had to pick one, what would it be? No, you know, I I love yeah, I love elk hunting, but that archery hunt this year for mule deer, uh, chasing those mule deer. Uh, Man, that was addicting. That yeah. was that was a lot of fun and and kind of, you know, changed. I don't know. It's it's tough because there's nothing there's nothing like having a 600 pound animal screaming at you, coming in and you know you you're talking to him, you're calling him in, and you you have him you know come in on a rope. Um, I I was in Colorado last last season with uh, with my buddies from you know, Kentucky and, you know, they're whitetail hunters. And, and I got up, we got up there first morning and, and, uh, it was Labor Day weekend early. And, uh, I, we heard a bugle, I bugled back and he responded and I, I called that bull in on a rope and, you know, my, my buddies just, they, they couldn't believe it. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's, it was like what you see on hunting shows, you know, right. and just the adrenaline of, of working that bull and having that bull come in and responding to my bugles, I mean, that adrenaline rush is is amazing. But, you know, with mule deer, when I finally got my opportunity on that buck that I had been chasing all month, and he just outwitted me all month, and then I finally, you know, out, outwitted him that one morning, and I, I was in position. I mean, that... Three steps. Yeah, three steps. <laughs> I was three steps away from getting the buck I wanted, but, you know, that... That was, that was a lot of fun, and and that was you know a different challenge. Yes, it was a different challenge. So I, now if you just said you're bugling in mule deer, I that would be impressive. Yeah, I you know, <laughs> I don't I, I don't know if uh, I, I don't know if uh, the elk nut um, has any tips on on that, but uh, you know that that would be pretty impressive. Now, I, in November, have you have you ever rattled them in? I, I haven't. I know some guys that have. Um, I remember, you know, when I first started bill hunting, I, <laughs> I, I went into Sportsman's Warehouse and I bought uh, one of those grunt tubes for, yeah. for deer. And I, you know, I was 16. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, so I used that a few times, but never had any success with it. You know, I. I, I'm on the same way. I have the I have the grunt tube, and then, and then I don't even have the rattle horns. I have like the bag, like the little mesh bag with a bunch of plastic right, stuff in right, it. Right. Which I forget who we had on. Dylan would probably remember, but uh, we had somebody on, and they actually rattled in their Pope and Young buck with one of those rattle bags. Yeah, and it, I've seen it. I've seen you know guys use it and have it work. You know, I, you know this 
when they're running, you know, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I actually, I've witnessed, you know, mule deer, you know, you know, fighting, uh, in, in November. So, yeah. yeah. So it makes sense that it would work if you, you know, find a buck that's, that's, you know, in the right mindset. Yeah. And he's like, Hey, he's hey. fighting in my territory. Yeah. Who's that guy? It's, uh-uh. You're out of here. Coming in. And that would be a rush. That would be fun. Yeah. To rattle one in. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. I saw more I, I got to hunt wisconsin last year late season and man it was cold and i was in a tree stand trying not to freeze my tail off and i heard more grunts in that one sit than i've heard in the whole rest of my life yeah, and it was cool. just cool because you're like uh, uh, you know they make that and you're you're looking and hear 300 it's the other thing is i couldn't believe how far away you could hear it right because you 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 know, you look at a, a, a goose call or a duck call or an elk bugle, and you can hear that a long way off. Right. And then you're like, what's this little grunt thing? I mean, they, they can't hear this. And, man, 300 yards, you can hear it. You know, I my, my first year um, whitetail hunting, I, a couple years ago, I went to Kentucky and hunted my buddy's property. And, and uh, the same buddy I was in Colorado with, you know, last year. And and uh, I ended up shooting a, shooting a buck, and uh, <laughs> he was – he was, you know, smaller than what I, what I wanted. You know, there was there was bigger deer on the property, but what uh, got me excited and the reason I flung that arrow is, I was sitting there and all of a sudden behind me I hear the, huh, huh, you know, I hear the grunts and yeah. and it just got me, you know, just got the heart race and I grabbed my bow. I had an arrow knocked <laughs> and before I even saw the antlers, I, I was like, that's a big buck. <laughs> and and he it's looked on, up, baby. It's, it's on. It's on. It's on. And he came. He came in, you know, to some does just grunting like crazy and just right underneath my stand. And I just remember seeing antlers and then just, you know, he stopped and he was broadside and I, you know, flung the arrow. And, you know, it was my first whitetail and, you know, it was a decent buck. But, you know, once I walked up <laughs> walked up to it, I was like, man, I thought that thing was a lot bigger. And yeah. I, I think it was his grunts, you know. He sounded like a big old boy. huge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, they call that ground shrinking. <laughs> right. And it's uh, that's not why, the first time it's happened. No, and that's that's why we use tape. <laughs> Won't be the last. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's I, I see something online, and and when I see it, and everybody does it, and and it's like, oh, how big is it? Oh, it's one eighty. Uh, was it one eighty or is it not a one? You know, yeah. I mean, do you, do you have the score sheet? Oh, I never had it officially measured. Okay, so it's a one fifty and change. <laughs> you know, and and it's. Yeah, that's why we use the tape measure because they don't lie. Right, right. But uh, well, even even with that, like you know, um, you you have to have someone that really knows how to score. Um, you know, I last January I had a my once in a lifetime you know buffalo hunt down on the Henrys. Okay, and, uh, it was an archery hunt, and my goal going going into that, I knew it'd be a really tough hunt. My goal was just to get a buffalo, you know, and. So like, all right, the first week I'm gonna really go f- go for a bull. Um, second week I'll shoot a cow. You know, right. like, yeah. I'll I'll get anything. You know, it's a late season um, buffalo hunt, and you know, with the bow, it's gonna be a challenge. I ended up, you know, being very fortunate, and I, I got my bull um, that that first night. But you know, we did a quick score on him there on the mountain, and uh, I I thought maybe I, I would have an opportunity to not only be you know, Pope and Young record book, but uh, Boone and Crockett. Right. Right. <laughs> and then I got it officially scored. And, <laughs> you know, it, it, it <laughs> let just, me ask you this. <laughs> did it go up? No, it went down. <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's, it, but people, and I was pretty confident in it too. I mean, it's yeah. a, it was a beautiful hole, big, big fluffy head and everything, but uh, realized real quick we really didn't know how to score. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and you look at it and, um, it, you know, and a buffalo is not, a difficult one to score right like it compared to and the one that i thought before i was immersed into the culture of, of measuring and i'm not even an official measure i've been around some panels and i've watched a lot of measuring but um the one that i was like well gosh couldn't couldn't we just do something you know it's got to be easy to measure whitetails and whitetails are actually one of the more complicated hmm. because there's so many nuances that if you don't go through the process and go through the course, I mean, people don't realize you have to take a three day measuring course right. to get certified as an official measure. And, um, the nuances there and, and all the different takes on whether this is a, a 
normal point or an abnormal point. And sometimes it comes down to, you know, I mean, if it, here's how you check here, here's how you determine if your guy's a measure. Number one is, does he have a measuring manual? Because every single legitimate official measure that I've ever seen walks around with their measuring manual. Right. I mean, guys have been doing this for 30 years. Guys that come to panel, the best measures in the world still bring that measure manual and consult it on right. animals from time. It, it's, it's the, they take it to a degree that I had never, I never would have imagined. Wow. You know, definitely not like, Oh, grab mm. your tape measure and I'll drop the tailgate. Yeah. And, uh, well, you, you know, know, from that bow hunters bash, you know, they, they had, uh, you know, the measuring, um, you know, that three day course. Yes. Right. And, uh, I, I forget his name with Pope and young, but you know, I let him know that I would be interested in, in doing that. And the reason is, is they had that, um, um, competition where you could judge field the animals. judging, yeah. the field judging. Yes, and I did that, and I realized I really sucked. <laughs> that field judging, <laughs> I was, you'll notice I didn't. Get it. <laughs> I was way off. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to just go back to. That's a shooter. That's a shooter. That's a shooter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a guy that can field judge, and I real, I, you know, realized that real quick doing that. That little, you know, that competition. Yeah. That's. I, I was talking to some guys, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go do the field judging. You know, like. And and they're like, well, that's not fair. You were for Pope and Young, and I'm like, you didn't see my name on any of those trophies, did you? <laughs> they got my twenty bucks just the same as everybody else, and I wasn't a contender in any of that. So yeah, no, I was I was way off. I you know, I, I guess that's why I, I'm always dealing with ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, and me, I'm like, it may not be as big as I thought it was, but it's still big enough. Yeah, you I'm know, like, shooter. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and really, you know, when I'm out there, that's, that's what I'm going for. I'm going, I, I really go for experience, you know, more, yeah. more than anything. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, the, my most memorable hunts are some of the ones where we just, you know, left empty handed, didn't even, didn't even kill anything. You know, I, I remember the first, first year me and my buddy hunted Idaho. Yeah. We went up, um, around uh, chalice and salmon and that's big country up there and you know we we didn't have you know the gear uh the horses the you know whatever to really hunt it hard and we just we just murdered ourselves yeah for, you know for five days and <laughs> saw hardly anything yeah. and it just was cold it was snowy you know we it was just we, we didn't even have a we didn't have a wall tent my buddy just brought his you know his tent and you know, we, we had, you know, four or five layers we were sleeping with and, you know, just uh, to stay warm. And, you know, we just, we just suffered and we, you know, yeah. we were pretty naive, uh, to the whole thing. But, you know, looking back and that, you know, that buddy was with me this last fall in Wyoming when I got my elk, you know, we, we talk about that and man, that's one of the most memorable hunts. You know, it was, yeah. it was a lot of fun, you know, looking back. Now, like you said, though, we're men. So yeah, yeah we, we forget, we, the we forget to suck. Yeah. <laughs> It's no, we we went. I I did an Idaho hunt, and, and we just I talked to a couple people who you know had some insight, and they're like, "Oh, go here and and try this." And there's some really good you know basins up in there, and and so so we show up. My my buddy and I zoom up there, and and uh, like just getting there was an adventure because the road that I thought we were supposed to go down, that uh, he's like, "Yeah," he says, "There's a big you know like uh, it's not an official campground, but a place that you could park an RV." You know, like two miles down this narrow, winding gravel forest road with no turnaround in the end, <laughs> as we just found once we pulled down in there. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so it was an adventure. You know, we wound up just parking on the side of the road and, and, and sleeping for a few hours. And then we got up the next morning and we we left the, the trailer there and, and we're just driving along trying to get the lay of the land. And we're up in the forest, and all of a sudden, it's like a Walmart parking lot. There's like there's cars everywhere. There's four wheelers everywhere. There's people, <laughs> and we're like, "What in the?" Because elk don't like people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've, that's one thing I've learned. Yeah. Yes, and so all of a sudden, we zoom in there, and and there's there's people like, you know, running down there, and we're like, we stop and we're like, "What is going on?" And they're like, "Oh, there's a you know 50k adventure race," <laughs> and and I'm like, "What?" 
And they're like, yeah, there's a 50K adventure rate. And they literally, like, the map that I had downloaded from the off the computer where the guy said, hey, these are some really great basins. Literally, it was like everything between the start and the finish of that adventure race was where I was going. Yeah. And it was, you, you hear the stories, like the, the leader of the race, he had to stop to let a herd of elk cross in front of him. Yeah. And I'm like... It's the quintessential day late and a dollar short. Yeah, like, Jason, I I had a similar experience a couple yeah. of years ago in Idaho. I I pull up, same thing. Some buddies had given me you know some intel. Yeah. For 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 a trailhead, you know. So I get my four wheeler, go down this trailhead, and as I'm going down the trailhead, I'm noticing like purple ribbon on trees. Right. <laughs> like and it's every you know a few hundred yards, and I'm, I'm seeing this purple ribbon, and you know, the trailhead was empty. I was the only outfit, at, you know, at the right. trailhead. So it's like, I, I, like, I guess, I don't know what what's this, this ribbon's for, ribbon? but, yeah. you know, what's this purple ribbon for? I couldn't figure it out. And anyway, I eventually, you know, set up camp or whatever, and and uh, I ended up <clears throat> getting an elk that night and got back to my tent, you know, around midnight after I cut up the elk and everything. And I get in my tent, and I'm falling asleep, and, and all of a sudden I... No joke, I, I hear music. And it's like, and it kind of sounds like Metallica. And I'm like, am I hallucinating? <laughs> and I'm laying there and in the middle of the woods. In, in the middle of the woods. <laughs> and, and, you know, my tent is just, just off the road. But, you know, I hadn't seen a soul. And all of a sudden, now I'm, you know, in the middle of the night, I'm hearing this music. All of a sudden, there. horror movies are playing <laughs> in the back of your head. You're like, right. I want to get murdered. Right. And it was like Metallica or something, you know, yeah. Inner Sandman. You know, coming down the trail and it's getting closer and closer and, you know, and then I can see the light and I'm like, what the heck was that? You know, and, and then I hear some more people. And so I kind of get out of my tent to see what's going on and it's runners. And then, then I realized that purple ribbon was, was marking the trail. Oh, that's so the next morning I wake up and there's just people coming down the trail, oh my you know, gosh. and yeah. so I go get my elk and I get it all loaded up on my four wheeler and everything and. And I'm headed out, you know, pack up tent uh, camp, and I'm headed out, and, you know, I'm going the opposite direction, and I got, you know, I'm passing people, and they're either giving me the thumbs up or dirty looks, you know. Yeah. And uh, I get to the trailhead, <laughs> and there is just pop-up tents, you know, uh, there's a medical tent, there's just cars everywhere, there's, you know, a few hundred people just, just right right there at the trailhead, and my truck is blocked in. I got pop-up tents on both sides of my oh, truck and, and vehicles surrounding my truck, and they yeah. just they just uh, blocked my truck in. And here I am, bloody, with like this carcass on my four wheeler. Right. <laughs> I had to pull up, and uh, you know, had to have people move move their vehicles so I could oh, get my truck out. And everybody's watching me load my four wheeler with this dead <laughs> elk. Dead elk <laughs> on the back of the truck. It was yeah. it was pretty funny. I, yeah. You're like, you know, can you move your vehicle? Well, right. Not really. And just like, you know, I kill stuff for fun. You might want to right. move your rig. Luckily, the the lady that was blocking me in, she was, you know, her husband hunted, and she gave me a high five and congratulated me. That's cool. Because uh, I was pretty worried about that. I was like, oh, yeah. man, I I hope she supports this. But uh, it's pretty funny. I had a lot of, lot, you know, a lot of stares as I was, you know, pulling into the parking lot with this uh, four-wheeler with an elk on there. Yeah. I was, you know, I'm more conscious of that now. Like back in the day, I mean, I remember one time, you know, I was, I was a proud, I, I just, I grew up hunting. I didn't right. like, same with me. Yeah. It's like, I didn't know people didn't hunt. I'm like, right. I'd starve to death. If I didn't right. Hunt. I mean, right. Like, exactly. What do you eat? Right. You know? Right. And you don't hunt. You're crazy. Yeah. You, know? you don't hunt. <laughs> well, you're a drain on the society. <laughs> right. And, and I just never realized it. And now you realize that not everybody in the world hunts right. and most don't. And so I'm a little bit more. Uh, yeah, you got to be cautious about it. Yeah, yeah, you got to be cautious about it. You got to, yeah. I mean, our, I mean, I feel like, you know, our numbers are just exploding because you know it's hard to get uh, over the counter tag nowadays. Yeah. But you know that that's good because we're we're getting more people uh, coming into this industry, even you know with with archery hunting. But even with that, we still have a lot of people that don't understand. Uh, this tradition that 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 we love, uh, they don't understand the need, you know, in in modern society. So whatever we can do to advocate, you know, the positives of this industry, the positives of hunting, 
uh, the conservation that is hunting, you know, yeah. it's, it's really, it's really important. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I try to be really careful with, you know, even what I, you know, post on my social media, uh, you know, I, the grip and grin is great. And, you know, there's, there's things that I love to post to really promote, you know, this lifestyle and this way of life that we have, but, you know, you also have to be conscious of, you know, the, the masses don't really understand it yeah. and, and they're opposed to it and they see it in a certain light that the, the interesting thing is the masses don't do it, but the vast majority of the masses are not opposed to it. Right. And so that's the, that's the one that, that really struck me. Cause like, you know, when you're younger, you just don't care. You're like, well, if you don't hunt, you're an idiot. Right. You know, and that, that was how my thought process, I just didn't know. And then you learn, and then you, now all of a sudden I realize that, okay, well, 80-some percent of the population in, a, in the U.S. does not hunt, but 80-some percent of those people who control the ballot box and control my future as a hunter, 80% of those people that don't hunt are not opposed to it right. as long as we don't post things and turn them against us right and that was you know because you know i've gone through the thing like with social media because you know somebody said well you know i can't believe you posted a a picture of and it wasn't something i posted but they were talking about i can't believe this guy posted a picture of this you know animal with blood coming out of his nose and i'm like Have you ever shot an animal i mean right. that's it's part of the process right and then you realize the bigger picture is not as a hunt, you know, we're not trying to not offend hunters. We're trying to not turn people against hunting exactly. that otherwise wouldn't. And that's right. that's a hard concept for folks to grasp. And I, I think, uh, you know, some folks have it, and some folks in the hunting community don't. And um, yeah, I, you know, do you do you feel like you know in the past couple of years, even with like the pandemic, do you think it's it's helped? You know. I, I think Help it's. Us. I think it's done both. I think it's brought a lot of people to hunting and fishing and subsistence type activities because all of a sudden they they you know they went to the grocery store and they couldn't buy a steak right. yeah because there wasn't one to buy right and all of a sudden so I think a lot of people turned to the outdoors and turned to hunting you know. Uh, not so much for the sport, but for that, you know, uh, subsistence, yep. you know, for, for organic meat, for, for that kind of stuff. And I think a lot of those folks now that they get into the industry and, and they're getting more immersed in the culture, I think they really appreciate it because, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the antis, if you will, they think we're just a bunch of dumb heathens that all we care about is, you know, you know, killing poor innocent creatures. Right. Uneducated, low all. IQs, they're just yeah. bloodthirsty. Yeah. Yeah. And and they don't understand that had it not been for hunters, there would not be an, a number of wildlife species in, in North America. Right. White tailed deer yep. was saved by hunters. Right. I mean turkeys. wood ducks, turkeys. You know, and, and the example I use, you know, when I was growing even when I was in college which wasn't that long ago, or at least it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> you know, um, there, there's a subspecies of Canada goose, the cackler Canada goose. You could not shoot, you know, even 20 years ago. It was a federally protected species. They are doing so well now because of hunter efforts that it makes up, I think, 75% of the bag limit in the same area where I couldn't hunt them 20 years ago. Right. So, I mean, there's these huge success stories, and... And the antis don't understand that they had nothing to do with any of that. Right. Like keeping somebody from hunting, it, it's, I think there's a mis, misnomer that, oh, well, if, if you don't hunt anything, if you just let it go wild, there's an, it will find a natural balance. No, it doesn't. We, you know, things are to the point now where they have to be actively managed. Right. So. It's, yeah, no, that's an interesting point. Like actively managed. I, I think a lot of environmentalists or people that are opposed to, you know, hunting, they, they see humans as just, you know, nothing but a negative yes. to, to the environment. And, you know, our place is to sit and do nothing. Well, that, no, that doesn't really, yeah, no, it's not. That doesn't make sense, you know, yeah. with 
with you know the pop- population growth, uh, where where our you know uh, cities and suburbs are expanding to, it really is important you know for us to step in and and manage the resources and those resources and part of those resources are you know wildlife yes. and the money generated from hunting. You know, absolutely. Yep. Pittman Robertson is huge. It was a self-imposed tax that hunters put on themselves. Right. Like you don't see. You don't see that happening. You know, vegans don't do that. They don't say, "Hey, I'm going to impose a tax on all of this <laughs> tofu and whatever else crap they eat," and uh, it, just just to go towards you know conservation. Well, even you know, even with that, you know, like the whole you know vegan push, uh, vegetarian, you know, just. That somehow that is more um, friendly for the environment is just it really is a lot of BS and it's a farce. It, it's a farce, and you know the industry I'm in. You know I work with the suppliers that supply, you know all the you know the pea protein that's in the industry, right. um, all those uh, vegan options, and you're talking monocropping. You're you're talking. Uh, destroying environment of these species that they are opposed of you know opposed yes. to us hunting, you know for for their food and and it, the irony you know with that you know they they, they don't see it they don't understand it. No. And I I work I work with someone that is you know vegetarian and vegan and and uh, you know she she is that way for the environment and <laughs> I'm like it it doesn't make sense it, it never has made sense to me and it never will make sense to me because it it really isn't it's not that way that's yeah and she's listening to what what is it al gore's documentary where he flies his his private jet across the world right to talk about climate change right <laughs> yeah no and it's well and i'll tell you what here's another one that is not as black and white and as clear as that but it's very frustrating to me who's been in the industry, in the conservation industry, you know, for decades, is we have hunters out there, you know, hunters, fishermen, outdoors people that that don't participate, that don't actively participate in conservation of wildlife and don't actively participate in pro hunting activities. Because every day... Trust me, it comes across my desk. Every single day, someone is trying to diminish your rights to hunt. Yes. Every single day in America. And how many hunters? There's millions of hunters, and they don't take a stand. I'm, I'm not saying everybody has to join. If, you know, if you're a bow hunter, join Pope and Young or join your state bow organization right. or join a local. Just just jump in and participate you know, I mean, part of what we do is preserve, promote, and protect. Somebody's got to protect it. And we work with those state agencies, or not agencies, but the state clubs and organizations. And so, you know, join a state state bow organization. If if you're not a bow hunter, join, you know, Oregon Hunters Association. Right. Join Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. Join something so that you're contributing because you, you have to give back or you're just a user. Right. And I, it amazes me how many people, and I know guys that are, you know, very successful, live to hunt, and then they don't give anything back, and it's it's disappointing. Well, that's why, I, you know, <clears throat> with Wild Fit, I was so excited to just yes. jump into the deep end. I, you know, it's... it's cannonball, baby. Cannonball, baby. <laughs> like, I, you know, because I, you know, I really, I, I see the value of that, and, and the value is not just... For my brand, but also what Pope and Young represents and what Pope and Young does, you know, um, for for this industry and for you know a lifestyle that I love that I was raised with, um, you know, my I, I, I want to have my daughter, you know, hunting with me, you know, um, or twenty at least years have from the now, opportunity. or at least have the opportunity, right? Yeah. Like have that choice and have that choice be available to her. Yes, and you know, it's it. It's it's important that you know we really get out there and uh, have our voices heard and and uh, you know that's why it was uh, a no brainer to just cannonball in and you know join as a corporate partner with Pope and Young and uh, you know um, yeah just really excited yeah for that. Well, we're excited to have you I know we're looking for we've got Reno coming up in April mm-hmm. um, we're back in Ogden May twenty. So yeah, yeah, I'll make be there. sure that's on your calendar. Yeah, we're well, gonna we're 
that's that's just kind of ramping up. We had a couple of conflicts we were trying to work through, and finally we were just like, you know what? Make well, I know somebody. You, I, you, yeah, you know somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call him. Don't make me call my mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't make me pull that card. Yeah, no. Your mom was great to work with. It was. It's so nice when you have a, a facility like that. And Mike at the, at the facility, your mom, everybody was so great to work with. It really was positive. And this year it's going to be bigger and better. We're Let's doing grow another yeah. measuring course. So we're going to have, you know, 20 people in there learning how to be official measures. And so it's, it's going to be great. Uh, convention is going to be huge. Uh, that's like right now, a couple months out, it's kind of all encompassing and so many exciting things about that. I, I the I'm ones, excited. I'll tell you what. So here's a couple of things. Um, Number one, do you have your tickets to go hunt with Chuck Adams? I I need I, you need I, you, okay. I need to I need to check that. Check out the website. Yeah, I need we, to do that. Here's something where you can win something you cannot buy. You cannot buy a hunt with Chuck Adams, who yeah. is the greatest. No, he's the goat. Hunter. Yeah, he's a, he's it. He's it. He's like if Tom Brady could be a bow hunter, he would look up to Chuck. Michael Adams. Jordan. Yes. Yep. And so you look at that, and here's an opportunity. You went, a you went a white. It's cool. It's a twenty dollar ticket. You went a whitetail hunt at Liberty Ranch in Oklahoma. Great place <laughs> to kill a big buck. Right. And then you're going to be in camp with Chuck Adams. I'm yeah, like, that would be legendary. I'm bringing a sharpie, man. Right. I'm like, he's going to be signing everything. <laughs> right. And so, so that's one. Um, and it's a limited number. It's not an open number of tickets. Okay. Well, I'll get on there tickets. today and get those tickets. And then the other one is, I got to ask you. Our convention raffle this year, which is is actually going pretty good, um, it may sell out before we even get to convention. However, it, it we have a choice this year. There's one winner, but you get to choose from four trips. So I want to hear right now which one you'd pick. Yeah. Option A, you have a Yukon Moose with McMillan River Adventures. Don Lind, I mean, one of the best in the business. So that's option A. Option B with Peter Barella. Once again, we got the, the best of the best here. So option number B, Peter Barella. You can go hunt mountain goat and brown bear. Nice, nice little hunt. That's this, and, and these are lifetime hunts for most of us. Yeah. Option C, okay, is Africa. And, and you know what's funny? If you say African, everybody's like, oh, well, I, I want to hunt in North America. However, Machwir, who are our good friends over there, yeah. and these guys have been hooking us up and I talked to them. They're at the show. Uh, we're at the Western Hunting Expo. They're at the show, and I talked to these guys, and they hooked us up. So here's here's option C: lion, Cape buffalo, crocodile, lioness, and the sable. Dang! I mean, that's that's crazy. That's a crazy package. And yeah, that's, that's a- And then option four is with uh, the longest running. Uh, camp in Alaska is is uh, Rainy Pass Lodge. Steve and Denise's parents put a package together for us. Once again, all of our outfitters are just blowing it up. They went above and beyond. And what's the species for D? Uh, D. Uh, you, you trying to rush me? You know, I'm kind of okay. So for D, so option oh, I D. I thought you forgot. I thought no, maybe you had a I'm rain just, I'm just working up. Oh, to okay, it, all right, man. all right. Yeah, sorry, so sorry. option D: doll sheep, Ooh. brown bear. Caribou, black bear, forest species. Which one are you taking? Oh, man. Well, when you started with A, I was going to say A. Right? You know, I, but I think, and I, I've been to Africa a few times. I never to hunt, but uh, Africa is a magical place. It is a magical place. It, it, it's, unless you've been there, you, you really don't understand no. how special that place is. Um. I think I I probably would go with D. You go. I, I'd, it's a doll sheep. Yeah. And then a brown bear. Yeah. My, my dream is to get a brown bear with my bow. There you go. That's my dream. And these guys do it as good as anybody. So it's, I just. So I'm going to get that it. raffle ticket. And we're drawing that in Reno. I, I is just one? I can, I, can I only get one or can I? No, you can buy multiples. We All actually, right. the more you buy, the cheaper they are per ticket. Okay. I think it's uh, hundred bucks a piece, or I think it's three for two fifty, or five for something. Yeah, so we've got all kinds of packages, and just just check it out, pope shopping dot org. I'm gonna um, check it out. We're drawing that at convention in April, 
So especially if you're going to be at convention, don't wait till you get there because they're, they're, we're not yeah, expecting I'm, them to be available. Yeah, no, I'm going to get on there and, and yeah. uh, get some tickets for that. For I sure. cannot wait to be on the stage. And you know what's funny is we we're going to do that Chuck Adams. We we're going to pull that earlier, and Chuck said, hey, man, I'm going to be at uh, – I'm going to be at a convention. He says, can I pull that ticket? Oh, so imagine cool. imagine being there in the room, and Chuck Adams is, and he's so excited about this hunt that he wants to draw it himself. That's just, to me, <laughs> I mean, it's Chuck Adams. Yeah. So we're excited about those. Those are uh, those are going to be good, and we're going to draw them there. And I just, I, I want somebody to come up. Can you imagine winning either of those? Oh, but any having, one of those hunts. I, I mean, all but, of them. Would but be. then having to pick. And so we're going to bring you up on stage, and we're going to make you pick. And, I mean, somebody's going to be crying because they just won the hunt for right. a lifetime. And then they're going to be crying because they can't choose. It's going right. to be great, man. Oh, yeah. So. That's, those are really tough choices. Yeah. I mean, that's. Those are tough. There's not a bad choice in the bunch. No, no. So, and it's last year they took the, last year it wasn't the same size, but they took a, uh, uh, mountain goat black bear combo was the one from the raffle last year. And, and that's cool. They, everybody, that would, that would be an awesome one too. Yes, it would. Yeah, and would this be... year it's a mountain goat brown bear. So yeah, mountain goat brown bear. That's cool. God. But anyway, so here, here's the other question we ask everybody. I have to ask those questions because I'm so excited about them. It's just, it's, it's insane. I, I just can't believe our outfitters just keep coming up. Yeah, that's stuff. yeah. They they're really throwing it down. For yeah, sure. and so the other question we ask everybody is: When you find yourself up on the mountain chasing mule deer or bugling elk, what is one non traditional item that you make sure you have in your in your pack every time? Non traditional item. Yeah. So like you can't say a knife because that's just not fair. <laughs> and Dylan and I had we had like we've had a number of great answers and we have some that we're like yeah that's pretty cool and others you know we'll add it to the list but it's so no no pressure but there's been some cool answers yeah so i i always i always have a diet mountain dew a diet mountain dew i I really do we will put that on the list (laughs) yes you heard it here first diet mountain dew (laughs) if you're listening we have room for you no that's uh that's how i celebrate um and and you know sometimes just I, I I have to have a do like yeah. I I just I, I love diet do and and uh, I I always have a diet do in my pack. Yeah, so. <laughs> excellent. Well, we will we will take that. You know, for the longest time, I now you're throwing a wrench in there because for the longest time, I think it was Justin who shot that monster velvet non typical mule deer, and he said he said bacon. Oh really? And you know when he's up, he takes one pack of that dehydrated bacon when he's on these week long hunts. He says, "I get bacon one one time," and I'm like, "You can't go wrong with bacon." No, you can't. You can't. And then, um, you know, but but diet do. I'm. I, it's usually you know I, at least one can. And yeah. If it's one can, I I save it for, you know, um, you know, an event. You know, a highlight. A highlight of the yeah. Hunt. What, you know, whether it's you know killing an animal or yeah. you know getting back to the getting back to the the trailhead. Yeah, you know I'll pop it then. But very good. Well, hey, we we appreciate you being on board with us as a corporate partner. Uh, super excited um, for Reno and and for Ogden and uh, thanks for what you do. I know uh, we're excited to hear about what you've got going on and yeah. and uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep in touch. Yeah, just uh, real quick the. <clears throat> The supplement that we'll be launching at, okay, good. at the show. Actually. At convention. At convention, yeah. All right, so first first time, first place they can yeah, so, see it. Yeah, so it's uh, the first supplement in, in the Wild Fit product line. Okay. Yeah, it will be launching at the convention. Nice. That's the launch. And we, you know us. We like, yeah. the, we like to launch. We yeah. did that with Baku last year with the Puma. Yeah, so, yeah. <clears throat> so the, the name of the, the supplement is Deadshot. Dead shot. Dead shot. I like it. Yeah, dead shot. And you know, it's in the name, but uh, the purpose of this is it's it's a brain boost to okay. uh, to to help with focus and All right. clarity. Where can people find this? Well, it's going to be available on our website. Okay, uh, which is wildfitco.com. Wildfitco.com. Right. We'll uh, Dylan can get a link up there for us. Yep. And so check it out there. And if you want to be the first to have this. Be at convention. Be at convention. And you can I'll get it there. I'll, I'll, I'll have product for sale and also some okay. samples. They're nice. they're at our booth. So, yeah. 
I that, like it. We will have to. We will make sure people know. Let's we'll ramp that up on our social media too. Right. Yeah. No. I I appreciate that. And and really, I mean, it's very applicable to this. The supplement's very applicable and practical uh, to hunters, to archers. Um, the the convenience of uh, the dosage form. It, it's something you know you could take in the field um, right before you put that stock on nice. that trophy animal. Right. It's it's something that you could take in the morning or in the afternoon to give you a little mental boost, clean energy, enhance your focus. Something you could take in the you know the tree stand or the ground blind, Good. and uh, the packaging. You know, I'll make sure it doesn't make a lot of noise, right? If it's, but, I'll tell you what. If it's a mental boost, I know some people that could use that in gallon jugs. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Well, that's that's why it's the first supplement <laughs> that, that, that I'm launching with is because, uh, you know, I could use it. In, you know, yeah, you know, I'm telling you. And there's good. people underestimate, you know, they're like, oh, there's, you know, I, I, I can hit a quarter at 50 yards with my bow. Well, you know, that's all fine and dandy until you got a bull screen right. at you or until you've got that trophy of a lifetime out there. Right. And that and that's and and this this supplement, right, this this formulation is specific to what you just hit on. Right, it's stress support. It's concentration. To, it's to help with the concentration, calm the jitters, calm the nerves. That's that's the purpose of this. It has a very specific um, purpose and design uh, with this formulation. There's a lot of you know supplements on the market. Brain Boost, um, Nootropics is is what you know we call them in the industry. Okay, is you know, and they have a lot of ingredients, a lot of what we call labeled dressing. You know, this formulation is designed for a very specific um, scenario, situation, um, and, and that's a stressful, um, a stressful um, moment or you know, encountering, you know, something stressful like putting a stock on a trophy animal or, you know, having that big buck coming in, you know, to your, your tree stand and, and just trying to calm the nerves and you know, that's they, awesome i got a couple buddies the, shot. That, the way they drive i probably need a few of those just <laughs> just to have with me yeah it could help with road rage yeah <laughs> well hey i'm excited i can't wait to try it um to get my uh, my samples and my uh pick some up for for this upcoming season um we appreciate you guys working with us and and that's awesome you're dropping at convention so yeah we'll, we'll do our part let everybody know and and uh Come see Josh, check out his website, and uh, he will be at convention, and you can get it there. Sounds good. All right. Looking Thanks forward for listening, to it. everybody.